in today's session of Divorce Court. Marquetta Mack says the death of her daughter Jessica is a nightmare that Rodney won't let her forget. I believe she killed my daughter. She's trying to make it seem like her family shelled out thousands of dollars for her little ordeal. For her little ordeal? Is that what you just said? Mm-hmm. Don't you dare stand there and blame this woman for the death of your child. Now his new girlfriend's in court and she's pregnant. And Miss Howard, I hope you're listening to this very well. And if something happens to this child, he's gonna blame you. And Marquetta's unbelievable pain is shared by her best friend. <laughs> They told her that a way to work it out, she writes a letter to Jessica. And it hurts to watch these tears fall down and knowing that her heart is aching. Today, Marquetta Mack faces Rodney Johnson in an emotional session of Divorce Court. All rise. Court is now in session. Maybelline Ephraim presiding. You may be seated. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. This is the matter of Rodney Johnson versus Marquita Mack. And Mr. Johnson, I'm advised that after three and a half years of marriage, you want a divorce. Why? Because after my daughter died in 96, our marriage died. And I feel she has something to do with it. When you say it has something to do with it, you believe that she killed your daughter? I believe she killed my daughter. How can you say I killed die? your uh, daughter? Mrs. Mack, hold on a minute. Because it was negligence on her part. Like to, what? Not, 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 enough, not enough time with my daughter. Too much material. First of all, I was spending a lot of time with... Excuse me, are yes, we talking about you, the death you. of a child? We are talking about the death and of a child. And how old I, was this child at her this, death? Two months. Now, and the two of you going to stand there in front of each other bickering like you're talking oh, about I'm... a stray cat? I'm talking to you. She interrupted me. So now, um, back to the question you asked me. I, too much stuff in the crib. And too much stuff like what? Like blankets. It too gets much... cold. You got this a heater. Not... Let, let, let him explain to me why he believes you killed your daughter, because I want to see what his explanation is, why he wants to push that on you. Because I can't believe that you married somebody that you believe would deliberately kill your child. Is that what you're telling I, me? I'm, I'm not saying it's deliberately. I'm saying that she had something to do with that it. That she was negligent. How can Thank I you. have something to All do right, with what, killing a child that much... comes out of me that I hold for nine months? OK, that's a little girl. You don't kill yeah, no yeah, baby. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ms. Anyway, Matthew, um, hold on. He like seems was... to think that there is an explanation why he There's a very that on good you. explanation. Too much stuff in the crib. Basically. It's like blankets, mm -hmm. clothes. You don't set a, a baby in there with just a lot of blankets. I didn't put clothes were you? in there. Huh? I, you didn't hear me, huh? Where were you? Uh, we was in a separation at the time. Now, what was the doctor's report as to the cause of death? SIDS. SIDS is a lack of breathing. And you say, now, when you told the doctor, did you say to the doctor, doctor, let me ask you this. If my wife had a number of blankets in the bed. And if my wife was sleeping downstairs, upstairs, and the baby was downstairs, could that have contributed to her lack of breathing and caused her death? Did you question the doctor to that extent? No, I didn't, for the simple fact, it didn't hit me until I actually went downstairs and got to looking around like, why is all this in here? First of all, how can you look around when, when the police It was so messy down there? Excuse me, no. Was when the it? police officers came and investigated the place, they took everything, so therefore you don't even know for what one, I was in it was the crib. A, for one, I thought it was a fluke because as many times as you called me and paged me talking she about... She was sick. Oh, she had to go to the doctor. You know what? You ain't never took me to the doctor. Mr. Johnson and Miss Mack, you sound like two kids. Did your daughter have a history of illness? No, she did not. You just said she paid you a lot of times, told you to take her to the doctor because of flu. She told me to take her to the doctor because she wanted to be with me. No. Wait a minute. You have had a very tragic experience. Your daughter died from a disease that doctors are still puzzled about. No one has been able yet to explain, to understand, and to find a cause for SIDS. They haven't had an explanation yet. They're still investigating they and have. trying to find a cure for it. And that's why it's called sudden, Mr. Johnson, in case you didn't know what that word meant. Oh, sudden. I know what it means very well. So how are you going to blame her? You, you, because actually they do, I mean, they have did research on it, because I did research on it. And it is a lack of breathing. It's a breathing disorder. This is a tragedy. The baby died. 
Okay. It's unfortunate that the baby died. It does neither one of you any good, especially you, Mr. Johnson, to sit here and point the finger at your wife and try to blame her for your baby's death. Now, you're trying to blame your wife probably because you're feeling guilt that your little behind wasn't there. And now that you didn't do what you were supposed to do and you want to push the blame on her, and I'm sure you're ready to push the blame on him. Is that right, Ms. No, Mack? I have I don't want to blame him because he was not there with the baby 24-7. He was not down there when I had to go down there and find her in the crib, just not waking up, not even breathing, okay? He was not there when I had to go through the tragedy of trying to explain to my little boy how what's wrong with his little sister, okay? I'm not trying to put the blame on him, okay? I'm, I'm not trying to put the blame on him at all. But it's just a fact. He needs to stop blaming me for it, okay? Because okay. Sis, like you said, Sis is a sudden infant death, okay? Sis. Nobody knows how Sis is. You could do many autopsies as you want, and it's not going to show up nothing. So, so what were you doing when your child died, and, and what did that do for you? I was downstairs asleep. I had just put her to bed, went to sleep. Woke up, got up, and go fix my kids some breakfast. Now, if you, if you realize, she Excuse just said me. she walked downstairs. I don't think she so. She walked downstairs no. to find her kid asleep. Mr. Johnson, you know what? Your child, perhaps she should, she should have had the child in the room with her. But that's not unusual for a child to sleep in one part of the house and the mother to sleep in another. That's what I'm saying. The sad part about it is neither one of you were ready for this child. I, because was, you... I was. I was not ready. I love my baby girl, Jessica, to the fullest, okay? I don't care how many kids I would have. Nothing can take the place of her, okay? Yes, I did have a little boy, and I care about my son very well to this day, and I cared about Jessica, too. Is there any reason why the child was sleeping downstairs and you were sleeping upstairs? I was not sleeping upstairs, Your Honor. My bed is downstairs next to my little boy's bed and her crib. But you weren't, da you weren't in the same room she was in the night she died? Yes, I was. I was asleep. I had went upstairs to go fix some breakfast. Then I went, mm. then I told my little boy to go downstairs. So the baby was sleeping. Sister. This is daytime, and you're up moving about doing what you're supposed to do. Yes, before she had woke up. And and you're going to blame her when she's up during the that day? Is a, I mean, she lying. It's a lie because she How slept. How you going to say I'm lying? Because you slept upstairs because you and had cable upstairs, upstairs in your She it's... slept upstairs with me. Stop. <laughs> Were you there when the baby died, Mr. Johnson? No, I wasn't. No, I wasn't. So but the officer told me where she was, was, was and the what the... Uh -huh. Was the officer in that house when that baby died? No, but she told the officer where she was and where the baby was. That's where I'm getting you my understood information. You police officer What else do you then? want to talk about? Because you know what? Okay, we... You need to get over it, and you need to stop blaming your wife for your daughter's death. You need to accept the responsibility and accept that sometimes life throws us a curve that we don't know how we got there, right. but it's just life. When divorce court returns, Rodney's witness and Marquetta's witness take the stand. <laughs> they told her that a way to work it out, she writes a letter to Jessica, and it hurts to watch her sit there and write the letter and watch these tears fall down and knowing that her heart is aching. Are you involved in a dispute with a neighbor, friend, relative, or business person? Take your case to a new court show and be represented by a prominent attorney. Call 877-777-0099. Divorce Court is back in the case of Rodney Johnson as he testifies about his wife's infidelities during the marriage. Do you have a witness? Yeah, basically, the only thing What's your name? My name is Takiya Howard. Takiya Howard? Yes, ma'am. And, and you're yes, his I girlfriend am. now? Yes, and I am pregnant by him now. But when I got pregnant by Rodney, their marriage was over. And like their he, marriage is still not over, in case you didn't know it. Well, yeah, and she calls me all the time, and she reminds me of that, you know. Yes, oh, he's I still do. my husband, and yes, he's I over do. here now, and we're having sex, and if you don't believe me, you can ask no. my sister, because oh, she's sit sitting down. outside the door sit down. me. Whatever. <laughs> sit down. Be quiet, Miss Matt. What do you have to say? Come up. Oh, wow. What's your name? My name's Charissa White. Now, what did you want to say to the court? I want to say that I, I've seen her many nights. <sighs> she went to counseling, and <laughs> they told her that a way to work it out is she writes a letter 
to Jessica. And she's been doing that. And it hurts to watch her sit there and write the letter and watch these tears fall down and knowing that her heart is aching. How did she live with this when, she, when the baby died? She hasn't. She hasn't. And it's, she's. So is she still, are you still in counseling, Ms. Mack? She still go goes no to count. More. Not that much. Uh, not a little, a little bit, you know, because. And how much counseling have you been in, Mr. Johnson? As far none, as I know, no. none. None. But, I, mean, so I, I didn't ask you anything but one question. How much counseling you been in? I ain't been in none. All right, that's all I asked you. So, you know, to, 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 to see her going through this at nighttime, and then to maybe drive around, drive, go to the door store or something and happen to see him or something like that, you know? And, and he's like, you know, acting like nothing ever happened. When, when, I wanna know, when does he ache? When does he mourn? What does he do to comfort himself? Instead of trying to blame her all the time, what is, what is he doing? What is he contributing? So you're telling me that you've seen Mrs. Mack suffer? I know what kind of suffering and what kind of pain she's going through. And so you're crying? Him, mm -hmm. To the audacity. To blame her. To blame her for something that he doesn't even understand. I don't understand. I mean, you know, no one understands it. it. It doesn't make any sense. And I think it's ugly and it's spiteful of him not to pay for a headstone. Is it? Oh, okay. Have a seat. Is it? A headstone. Yes. Okay. It, it, so it. wait a minute. Finally, finally, somebody who recognizes and has some sense. Um, I see that you're crying, Miss Mack. What's going through your head now? Why are you crying? Just the fact that the times when I wanted to always talk to him about it, he was about never there. About the death there. of your daughter? Yes. Yeah. He was never there. Every time, I have just, just felt like even looking at a picture, he'd be like, why? It's like he's pushing it out of his head to forget about it. You can't forget a baby, OK? Especially if you cared about that baby. You can't forget about it. You can't forget mm -hmm. about her. So he's never offered you any comfort since the death of no. your child? It's always been a blame yes. from day one? Yes, it has. So you've had to go through the counseling by yourself? Besides having my family support me, yes. Without what about him. the funeral? He was there for the funeral, but that was But he like, wasn't with you? He was with me. But so far, so was my family. Who helped you make the arrangements? My grandma. Who helped to pay for it? My grandparents. Uh, 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 first of all, her grandparents, they pay, they help pay for it, but uh, uh, they did have a collection plate at the bowling alley. Don't even try that one. It's uh, not you. Uh, uh, they minute. did have a collection oh, plate at the bowling alley. So she's trying to make it seem like her family is just high and mighty and that they just no. came out, just you shelled out thousands of dollars for her little old deal, and they didn't. For her little ordeal? For, is that what you just said? Mm -hmm. Show about thousands of dollars for her little ordeal. Okay, they didn't. I mean, Mr. Johnson, I was you there. Know I had. I, you know I put in on it too. You need to close your mouth. She thinks her parents put out all this money for this little ordeal. Don't you dare stand there and blame this woman for the death of your child, which you can open your mouth to say this little ordeal. It's not a little ordeal. But and you, you're not upset about her and blaming her. You're not worried about the death of that child. You just need to push the issue off of somebody else. No. Nah. When divorce court returns, the judge renders her verdict. And an update on the case of Denise Watkins versus Michael Watkins. I just fell in love with her the minute I met her. My husband is nothing but a sweet-talking con artist. Con artist talk smoother than that. How do you figure he was a con artist? Divorce Court will be back in session in a moment. Divorce Court is back as the judge tries to determine if Rodney paid any money at all for his daughter's funeral. How much did you contribute? I didn't contribute. I was there for the funeral. I was there for everything else. But you did not. Uh, well, hold on a second. But you're going to talk about her wait parents minute, wait contributing and being high and mighty. How much did Mr. Johnson contribute? I contributed. How many dollars did you contribute? I don't have a calculator with me. How much did you contribute? I contribute a fair amount. What's a fair I'm amount? I'm going to ask you one more time. How I, much? I don't know how much it was. You it was, a, it was about, you, I say it's about two. How much is a headstone? The headstone is five seventy eight ninety nine. Now, you got the audacity to stand here and try to shift the blame and the fall on somebody else, and you can't even accept responsibility for a headstone, and you don't even know how much money you put on the funeral. If you put down $10, $200, $500, you would know that. 
But you can't tell me why, because you probably didn't give up a dime. No, because I did. Because you was too busy I blaming. I did. I did. I know I did, because it came out of my pocket. What did you put up? Okay, well, now that she's buried, now that she's buried, we can't bring her back. Exactly. Now that she's dead, we can't bring her back. Right. Even if you want to keep blaming your wife forever, that's your business. That's something you have to live with. That's what mm -hmm. you have to live with. Ms. Mack, you continue in your counseling. Don't let this foolish man, don't let this foolish man make you feel guilty over something that you couldn't control. But now you know if what? So, Here I is mean, something you can control. If she was so serious about her... Did you hear what her, I uh... said? Oh, wow. Yeah, wow. You need to grow up. <laughs> wow. And believe it or not, believe it or not, sometimes divorce is a sad situation, and sometimes divorces make you cry, but you ought to be clapping right now. Because I am. Oh, you need to, let me get you out of my sight. Pay for the headstone. Mm -hmm. I'll pay for the headstone tomorrow. It don't make me none. I now, if you such a like big that. man, you could have done that a long time ago. She never brought it to me, so hey. What yes, we, I you have. Okay, this, well, this is it. it this is it. She never brought it to me. She killed my child. She neglected my child. She, she, she. You have a blame issue that you don't accept responsibility. You like to shift. It's called transference. You like to shift responsibility to everybody else. You knew that baby died, mm -hmm. and you knew that baby was buried, and you knew that most people put a headstone. She didn't have to ask you anything because a responsible adult and a caring father would just automatically do it or make an effort to do it. It's probably because since you blame her, you don't intend to visit the grave site. So if you don't intend to visit, you don't need a headstone because you don't need to know where the child is. Because you're not accepting the death because you're pushing it on her. Now you need to grow up, and I said it again, and you need to learn to accept responsibility for your conduct and for what you contribute to life. And you were part of that baby. And she didn't have to ask you. You could have gone down to the cemetery yourself and given the man the money or the company. Nobody has to ask adults to do what they're supposed to do when they're responsible. Now, you have another child coming. And Ms. Howard, I hope you're listening to this very well because I feel sorry for you. I feel sorry for you because you don't understand what you have here. This man is still not ready to be a father. Well, and if something happens to this child, he's going to blame you. No, he won't blame no, yeah, me. You right. take That's care of my you. first child, so I'm not Word worried about it. Word to the wise. That's all I'm saying. Pay for the headstone. <laughs> Whatever it costs. What's the cost? You have an estimate? Yes, five seventy-eight ninety-nine. Well, since he, that's probably the least expensive one, right? Yes. And I'm sure that's not good enough for your daughter, right? I know you want to pay one that costs more, wouldn't you? If I see one. They have plenty of them, Mr. Mr. Johnson. Okay. But you're going to at least pay that five hundred and eighty dollars. That's the order of the court. All rise. When Divorce Court returns, an update on the case of Denise Watkins versus Michael Watkins. We didn't even have a sex life. She wants it five times a week and so. So you thought when you got married, you'd make love every night. I'm not saying making love every night. Closed captioning for Divorce Court provided by... Are you involved in a dispute with a neighbor, friend, relative, or business person? To appear before a real judge on a new court show, call 877-777-0099. And now for an update on a previous case in divorce court. Denise Watkins said she came to one conclusion about her husband, Michael. My husband is nothing but a sweet-talking con artist. I just fell in love with her the minute I met her. Con artist talk smoother than that. How do you figure he was a con artist? We didn't even have a sex life. She wants it five times a week and so. So you thought when you got married, you'd make love every night. I'm not saying making love every night. Denise and Michael couldn't agree on who should pay their outstanding household bills, and the judge ordered them to both pay half. After court, Michael thought he would try and reconcile with Denise. But after just one day, he realized a divorce was the best thing. Michael has decided that he wants to give up relationships for at least a year and give himself to his love of karaoke. Denise has also decided to pursue her dream of being a singer. She recently took first place in a local singing contest and now has her eyes set on a national competition. The tears and the little 
sad little whoop de whoop that she had going on with her little, her and her little sister. Hey, the headstone, so what? I'll pay that. I'm going to start getting the headstone as soon as possible. The tears was fake. I could produce them tears if you want me to right now. The baby died and it wasn't meant to be for us to be together. I only married her because of the daughter. The daughter's gone. She's a history in my page, that's all it is.